Faisal, would you talk about how the Diamond Logos is different from other teachings? Yes, thanks, thanks. Uh, I, I believe the Diamond Logos uh, suits more the new time we are in, the new age we are in. Mm -hmm. And I think it suits more the Western logical mind and um, intellectual structures and psychological structure more than the ancient nations and ancient traditions. Because the reason for that, I believe, we have alienated the new man, the new age man, the Western man, has alienated from being and from humanness and from heartfulness uh, to a very severe degree. Mm -hmm. And sought refuge in logic, in mind, in rationality, in the scientific mind, and left heart, mm -hmm. and left soul. So the structure that got built in the Western uh, psyche is very logical and very rigid structure and compartmentalized structure that needed a certain teaching to address it, certain keys to open the different compartments. Mm -hmm. While, for example, the, the, from the Middle East, uh, when I was there a long time ago, I knew that we didn't think logical. Logical, to think logical was something difficult. And you must be very brilliant to think logical. <laughs> you, know? like, you think with your heart, it doesn't make sense. It makes sense. We believe something works more than logic. Something works more than um, scientific. There is something called baraka. There is some blessings. There is some universal order. There is a God. There is so many things in the making. It's not like me systematizing and progressing and attaining the result. I might plan, I might devise, then God says, no, I change my mind and the whole plan is out of the picture. Mm -hmm. They believe that to the degree that they didn't develop this logical mind, this uh, well-structured ego. You know, we developed well-structured ego to the point that the ego became crystallized, become so alienated, mm -hmm. so rigidified it mm -hmm. lost connection mm -hmm. to the deeper aspect. They have much connection to the deeper aspect uh, of soul, of heartfulness, of love, you know, and warmth. While we are very logical, very sophisticated, and, you know, cars running by electricity, and we have Zoom and all of those. And yes, we are so hard, so afraid to feel love. To, to feel warmth, to hug each other, to except when disaster happens, then this logical mind loses its power and people show up. People show up in America and the West with their heartfulness, with their all and all of that. Otherwise, as if they got petrified, get frozen in a certain domain of reality, loneliness, alienation. I remember uh, Wilhelm Reich, you know, who, who developed Reich and therapy, uh, used to say, um, watch out, we are cultivating the schizoidal character. Mm. Character who is dissociated, who yeah. is disconnected from yeah. body, from heart, from instinct, from genitals. All of that, we, we get just, we reach a level of almost robots, you know. And I remember here about Nation of Aliens, there used to be a series of TV, Nation of Aliens, and every day I look, you know, here they are. <laughs> Here are aliens everywhere, you know. I remember once they asked Obama, the president, the old president, they asked him, have you, now that you are president, do you, have you, do you know about uh, aliens, those coming with UFOs and all of those things? Right, right. <laughs> I don't know about the aliens you, you're talking about, but every day I meet aliens <laughs> in the Congress. <laughs> <laughs> really, they are. You look at them like, are you re are you real? Mm -hmm. Are you human? Where is your heart? Where is your warmth? Where is you no know, system upon system upon systems of convoluted and this and the, the people are taken by by this and being driven away from the warmth of the soul and humanness. 
to reach this level of alienation, of schizoidal structures, to the, the level of extreme, extreme dissociation, uh, needed a, a teaching that deal with this kind of structure. Mm. Uh, I remember one of the high being, one of the high uh, Tibetan Rinpoches, you know, used to say, I don't know why, you know, we transmit Rikpa, enlightenment, love, and all of that, and why people don't, don't, don't get it, you know? And I remember telling him, Rinpoche, you really don't realize <laughs> how far, you know, we have gone away from this. For you, you grew up in it. So when you transmit it, your people are don't have these defenses, armoring structures. They're just a little bit of, I don't know, articulation, transmission. They're armoring softens and they receive the transmission and their soul gets empowered by it. But we are very well defended. You know? So this teaching came here to um, deal with the structure and the new age psychology and body psychology came to enable us to utilize these knowledges to help with opening up the, the alienated people, in, in, especially in the West, in America, and in Europe. Europe is a lot less. You know, when I teach Europe, in Europe, I teach essence, people get it quicker than here. And when I, take, when I teach it here, uh, the students really struggle. They have much more armoring. They have much more alienation, much more defenses. So it takes more work, more processing, more uh, work with the depth psychology in order to undo these blockages. You know, when I was in Kuwait, you know, the old time, I used to, I couldn't teach this. I was, you know, like, I learned a little bit of bioenergetics, like therapy, gestalt, analysis, a little bit here, there. I couldn't tell them when I see something, I cannot tell them what it is, you know? If I say if I say it straight, they they you know like you have an issue with your mother or you have an issue. Yeah. With, like, <laughs> don't ever mention my mother. This <laughs> like, because, but here I say yeah, it looked like you know you had some issue with your father. So, oh yes, you know my father. You know it's e it's easier to approach them. Mm -hmm. So I remember the old time I would go to visit families in Kuwait. You know, and family part of my family and friends' families. Mm -hmm. And each time I go there, I was very much immersed in healing and, and listening to my being and saying, what would my being do? You know, I, I always wanted to give them what is called baraka. Baraka means blessings. You know, oh. like, give us today our daily bread. Mm -hmm. That's what the Christ mm -hmm. said. It's exactly what I was saying, give us today baraka or baraka or baraka, you know? So, uh, I go there, listen to the family, we have dinner and they talk and the uh, wife complain about the husband and the husband says she needs to listen to me and the children say that. And all of a sudden the whole issue begin to, uh, you know, percolate in the field. Mm -hmm. And as if my being absorbed the field, absorb what's, what they are going through. And then a story arises in my heart. I used to love stories. I read so many of them and uh, kept, Learned them by heart and love, especially Sufi stories, Idrisha. And from those stories, as if the guidance select a story for mm -hmm. that night. Mm -hmm. And I, I tell it to them. Mm -hmm. Then mother, the mother starts crying, and the husband goes and kisses her head, forgive me, I wasn't. And the children said, Oh, what did we do? All of a sudden, the barakah, the blessing, touches their souls, touches their heart, and work on them in a very intuitive way, in a feeling way, in mm -hmm. a, an essential energetic way. You know, um, other cultures, for example, uh, learn through, for example, um, visionary you know, stories and visions. Some of them learn through music, mm -hmm. some like in Africa, dancing, movement, instinctual. You know, they, they cannot follow the logic. They cannot go through analysis. You know, but they can transform, they can get to all the essential states. They can go to love and joy and peace and power and intelligence and creativity through shamanic journeying or storytelling or music. You know. And uh, this works in the West nicely, but it is like gentle touching on the armoring. 
the armor is more drilled, which comes through psychological work, psychological inquiry, processing, body work, you know, and that's how this uh, uh, teaching came. But I used to love the stories and the stories, I still teach them a lot, you know, I do, because it goes to the heart. Exactly. It goes to the soul. And the soul absorb it and the soul translate it into logic or into action or into emotion because those stories are very, very profound and they are really uh, done by masters who know the nature of the soul, who know the nature of the human. And they can bypass the ego and the personality and go to, to the one who is inside who could learn. Because the ego barely can learn, but the soul can learn, can evolve. Yeah, that's beautiful. I mean, I mean, I mean, they say that great leaders are also great storytellers because they can, they can reach the heart. They can reach empathy yes. with the story as opposed to you know the bottom line. <coughs> yes, and the great leaders are musicians, and the great leaders are <coughs> not only in the political field. In so many fields mm. who came not just through logic, you know, but now we also not, not we are not really even using logic. Uh, Optimally, we are using it in a warped way to brainwash people, to make them feel insecure. We, we, I mean, every day we're bombarding them with fear and with paranoia and with deception and with, you know, and the human being is impressionable. The human being is pliable. You know, they, they used to say, you can't brainwash the human being. Mm. Now we can say, we, you, we can't condition them. Human beings are very susceptible to that. They are so much innocent in them. They are like children, you know? Repeat the story 10 times and they, they become it. You know? Yeah, it's true. I, I read a study last um, two weeks ago that um, it was like clinical research that essentially 40% of everything that we as humans do is habit. 40% of every everything we do all day long is just habit, just unconscious. It's, yeah. it's, it's just what we do. And yeah, so it's habitual mind rules us. Mm -hmm. Habitual mind is ruled by the unconscious, mm -hmm. certain mm -hmm. habit. And they rule our, our instincts. They rule our uh, unconscious. They rule our uh, in-depth emotions. Yeah. We live really a very conditional life. So, so with the Diamond Logos, how, how would you compare that to... Um, let's say, uh, any kind of religious path? I think religions brought different uh, lineages to earth. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember Sufis, for example, they have, um, they have association of certain qualities with different prophets. For mm -hmm. example, they believe that Abraham, the great prophet, the father of all the prophets, you know, uh, humanity was missing equality in its evolution, this consciousness. Yeah. And it had to do with yellow, yellow essence. Yeah. And yellow essence has to do with joy, with curiosity, with uh, seeking, with wanting to know. It's usually like at the age of, I think, two or three. You know, I don't know if you remember your son, I remember my children. Mm -hmm. When we go into the store, why? We buy food, why? You know, because we want to eat, why? You know, curious. Where, <laughs> what, when, how, why? Uh, humanity was more like, uh, uh, I think, more primitive, more stuck in their way. And they needed awakening. So this kind of awakening, Abraham came with the yellow. He infused the human consciousness with questioning, you know. And his questioning was, uh, where is God? What is God? And they told him, God are uh, God is this idol. This is the God of rain. And this idol is the He said, they are rocks. They are stones. You know, how could they be God? So one night he broke them down, you know, and uh, of course they, except one, the, the, the mighty, the God of all the God, one of the big idols there. And in the morning they caught him and he confessed, said, yes, I broke them, you know. Uh, no, no, before he said, I broke them, he said, um, if you want to know who did it, ask their God. Ask mm. this big one there. <laughs> he said, you're, 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 you know, 
laughing at us. He said, do you believe he is God? And you, you know, you won't ask him. They said, yes, Abrok, they, they are not God. You know, they are just stone. You know, you, you attribute to them these powers. Then he looked at the moon and in the night and it was dark and the moon shining. He said, this must be God, you know. But then sunshine came mm. and dissipated. He said, oh, it's not God. This must be God. So he opened the line of inquiry, curiosity, uh, courage to, to look and ask. And that's the quality of yellow. Yellow essence is located on the left side. And if you open it, it's called the yellow latifa, the yellow of joy and curiosity and awakening. So it, it opens this. If the child is not smashed down about its curiosity, they grow up more alert, more conscious when they know. Another prophet came and recognized humanity was, lose, was missing courage. You know, they were like, I don't know for one reason, they were afraid, they were intimidated. And that was King David. You know, David and Goliath, you know, and the symbol of it is this little boy take, you know, stand up to, to this tyrant Goliath who was enslaving the people and misusing them. And then he hits him with a rock and he defeats him. That's symbolizing the, uh, the person cracking down the super ego. You know? oh. the, the super ego is Goliath. Everyone, we have our own inner Goliath, you know. Oh. Beating us down, intimidating us, pushing us, you're not good, you are not this, you are not that. So this is the birth of like standing up to the super ego, you know, okay. and dismantling the super ego. And that generated a quality of essence we call red essence. It's the energy of heat, it's the energy of aliveness, it's the energy of playfulness, of running around, of courage. The courage to live, the courage to do things, the courage to come out to life, you know. Uh, Price, for example, in, in, the, in the Sufi tradition, that uh, he was the prophet who brought uh, peace. Who? Christ. Oh, Christ. Jesus Christ mm -hmm. brought peace to earth. There was enmities and uh, I don't know, Jews and Romans and all of those things that's going on. And what was missing is love and what was missing is love. Uh, I mean, it's peace, you know. So his equality was um, the ability to eliminate the evil force that can um, trigger so much of the uh, evil in the world. Mm -hmm. Like now, we call it the time, I call it the time of the beast. We are in the time of what this power inside us, this massive power, immense power in the human unconscious that is now being uh, used for uh, destruction, evil. Yeah. And this, e this evil is a black power, and it is, we call it the beast of the deep that seeks destruction, anti-life, anti-light, anti-God, you know? So humanity was ruled by this force. So he came with the power of the Messiah. One meaning of the Messiah means the one who rubs. He rubs in your forehead and he eliminates the beast. Hmm. He eliminates the ego. Mm. And comes black light, comes peace, comes the feeling that this universe is an immensely peaceful, majestic being and gave us the gift of life and that we need to receive this peace in order to eliminate the fear that the, the beast is using. Mm. That mm -hmm. This universe is, is the sacred, it's God, the, the, the father, the, the a beautiful being, and also he came with gold. So Christ symbolized that he brought the black light, you know, touches us and you feel, oh, peace. I was paranoid, I was scared, I was, you know, like like now, they, how they utilize paranoia, you know. The Russians are to destroy us and we need to protect our resources. And the Russians says the Americans are coming to, all of a sudden paranoia is they're creating yeah. against nations, against the planet. If not, aliens are coming. <laughs> They're winding up the pituitary gland in humanity, winding up the perineum in the in humanity, making us scared, making us paranoid. And the Messiah brings the light to peace, peace on earth yeah. and love in heart. Yeah. So that's each high beings came, Muhammad came, brought compassion. 
humanity at that time were cruel and mean and you name it. So, so much in, in the Arabic word, Arabian, that time was Bedouins and against each other and killing and all of that. So he brought, he brought compassion to humanity. So he brought green, green light, which has the word tenderness and compassion. You know, so they believe that these different beings come to humanity different times, injecting the human consciousness with higher and higher qualities needed as we go through our evolution. It, it sounds like we all what was needed has been downloaded, you know, and many high beings know that the, there are many qualities in the essential domain was not downloaded, like for a long time, the Tibetan know about the stupa. You know, stupa is an essential structure, is a very powerful structure made of jewels and light. I think you see the picture behind me there, you know, on top. You know, ah, yeah. There is a stupa there, you know, it's a beautiful made of gold and diamonds and jewels. This is the totality of the essential personal structure, personality. And we'll talk about it one day. What, what does it mean? Uh, he saw the stupa, the, the Tibetan saw the stupa in the higher, in the heavenly realm. It's a jeweled palace emanating love and light and energy as if it is the heart of the universe, pumping blood in the universe, pumping light and energy in the universe. And they, they worshipped it as, an, you know, as something in paradise in heaven. Till uh, their guru Padma Sambhava came, you know, and he said, he downloaded the stupa. He brought it down to earth. Hmm. It became an embodiment. And that's why those Rinpoches, each one of them aspired to attain, to become a prayer wheel, to become stupa, to become this generator of love and energy and awakening and all of those things. So each being seems like they know about in the essential domain, there is the perfect kingdom the utmost perfect kingdom, the holy city, Jerusalem, the city of light and treasures and all the qualities of essence are where the high being reside. And this realm is in the making. This physical universe, this earth, this human race is in the evolution. And the blueprint is there. And the high being aspire to download from there into this mm -hmm. realm. To bring the blessing from there and actualize it in this realm so humanity can evolve, the material world evolve, because the task that humanity took is to evolve the material world to become the most complete kingdom because it has matter, it has spirit, and it has mind, and it has body, it has all of it. So the lineages, the different lineages brought different, Christ brought love and peace, Muhammad brought compassion and guidance, uh, Moses brought perseverance and endurance, oh. uh, Abraham brought uh, curiosity and seeking God, you know, Buddha brought enlightenment, you name it, you know, they keep injecting humanity, human consciousness with different that, qualities. And so help, hopeful. Yeah, it is. It's different than what we hear nowadays. Mm -hmm. Those guys are really working hard, but <laughs> we're stubborn. <laughs> we are like children, but playing dangerously. Thank you, Faisal. Yes.